Hi, continuing on our uh, Wi-Fi 7 MLO series, today I'll do a short exposition on what EMLSR is all about. I have detailed the various categories of uh, devices related to MLO in another video. So hopefully you are familiar with what EMLSR is compared to other modes. My name is Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So Enhanced Multilink Single Radio is a client side option in Wi-Fi 7, primarily to reduce the burden of complexity on the client side, which wants to use MLO without jacking up the complexity too much. As you might know, most of the data guzzling Wi-Fi clients have settled in on a 2 cross 2 radio. And when it comes to multi-link operation, falling back to 1 cross 1 on 2 links for data doesn't appear to be too attractive. So, or having 2 sections of 2 cross 2 also is not very attractive from the complexity point of view. So that is where EMLSR comes in, where a client device with a 2 cross 2 implementation is able to also listen as 2 1 cross 1 for certain frames and certain rates. So it basically doesn't increase the complexity of the radio solution too much. And at the same time, it can add to some benefits. How do the benefits accrue? In this downlink example, as you can see, here uh, links can be randomly busy, two links which get busier randomly. And the way by which this multi-link can give benefits is if we can use the full two cross two power on the link which is available. Let's say the AP has data to send to this client and senses that this channel is free. So it sends a short control frame. It's in fact called as an initial control frame, an RTS variant. And that triggers this EMLSR client to now get ready for receiving data using its full power on that link. Not all the time, just for that particular instance. And then very quickly, the client has to go back to listening on both links. And it now gets an RTS on the other link and has to get ready for receiving the full-fledged data on that particular link and so on. So this one, basically the EMLSR mode for a client, helps you leverage the multi-link benefits in a certain way without jacking up the radio complexity too much. That is the intent of EMLSR. Another view which could be helpful is assuming that the APMLD is transmitting to the station, which is also called as non-APMLD. The non-APMLD is ready on both links as a one spatial stream receiver capable of receiving frames like a RTS variant and processing only certain rates, as you can see here, okay? And as soon as this comes up on, say, link one, it switches to a two spatial stream receiver on link one, and basically dropping any listening on link two. And once this data act transaction is over, it has to go back to listening on both links, okay? So obviously the challenge for the the, the non-APMLD is how do I tune this which was originally in link 2 to be on link 1 now receiving you know as a NSS2. So that becomes the fast uh, you know switching that is required and to help in that process the station can request for some padding. The station can also request for time to go back to listening so these are what are exchanged in some of the capabilities, uh, you know, that are shared from the client in terms of some padding time that the client requires, some transition time it requires, 
and so on and so forth. Of course, the AP also has to support this and we leave the uplink operations more or less to the client except for the triggered mode which unfortunately is not so popular so as far as uplink goes how the client uses its radios to uh, kind of use the multiple links is left to implementation the client is associated on the multiple links with the ap hopefully that information was useful you can take our uh, look at our website for more information. We also offer courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thanks a lot.